So this morning we're speaking about part two of this series, which I started last week, just a two-part series, on miraculous births. Last week we looked at John the Baptist's birth, and this week we're going to look at Jesus. But remember last week I prefaced it with a whole, like a disclaimer. I found it so hard to actually separate the two stories out because they're so intertwined. Uh, Mary and Elizabeth were family. Mary stayed with Elizabeth. And so it's so hard to separate them out. And I was like, but that's like life. It's hard to just compartmentalize life. Life is intertwined. It's interlinked. And we meant to live, um, uh, be interdependent of one another. And so I thought, you know, it's not a train smash. If I plan to have a sermon like there and like there and I couldn't and it's all mixed. Because that's just life. Life is a story of lives being mixed and merged together. And so... So that's okay. I'm okay with that. And so what I want to do this morning is I want to kind of flow out of last week. And I want to look at really the lives of these two women in particular, Elizabeth and Mary, the mother of John the Baptist and the mother of Jesus, and just how much Christmas impacted their lives. Because, folks, Christmas isn't just about, you know, coming to church and eating some good lunch. Christmas radically changed the life of Elizabeth and Mary, radically, but so differently. Both of them had miraculous births, but both of them, their lives were so radically changed by the Christmas story and what happened in their lives, by these two miraculous births. And what I, what I, what I kind of like about it is, you know, miraculous births, you kind of hear one of a miraculous birth, miraculous uh, whatever, somebody couldn't have a baby, and you think that's how God is going to do it all the time. We like to like put God in a box and think this is how he's always going to do my miracle. But what I love about this story is two miraculous births, but such different stories, such different ways God did it. And I, and I, and I, want, I want us to challenge as we're trusting next year, as we look at this series on miracles, making him known. Folks, as you trusting God for a miracle, don't be box God in and think, oh, I heard of somebody getting a miracle like that. Let it inspire you, but don't let it limit you and think that's the only way God is going to, you know, bring your miracle. You heard of somebody who got an envelope full of money, and every day you're running to the post box to look for the envelope full of money. God can provide your miracle of provision many different ways. Let that test me, inspire you to say, God, you're a provider. But let's be open to God. You can do this miracle in a thousand different ways. And so let's stretch our faith to say, God, any which way you want to do my miracle, I'm open to that. So let's carry on. I said I'm going to just uh, start touch with uh, Luke. Uh, well, we were looking at Luke last week, but John the Baptist, and this is his dad. When Zechariah's time of service was completed, remember he had been drawn by lots to serve in the temple, and he had gone to burn incense, and in this incredibly holy moment, he had had this angelic encounter, and the angel said, ha, oh, you're going to have a baby. And so he's now coming back from the temple. He returned home. The Bible says, after this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. Folks, I find that so interesting. You know, so I've read this before. This time I read and I was like, whoa, this woman spent five months in seclusion. Now, in today's day and age, you think, how on earth do you do that? But folks, having time out, silence and solitude, is such a God zone. You know, Christmas... It's time out from work for many people. We have public holidays, at least. I hope you get to, you're getting some public holidays. And you know, you can, you, you, can, you can be busy and fill your headspace with all kinds of movies and songs and busy, busy, busy. But there's such value in seclusion. There's such value in just taking time out to process life. Folks, in the last two and a half years, we've all been through a lot. You know, one of the things that, that I was listening to some people talk about, they said, you know, come 2022, after the two years of COVID, people thought, okay, it's back to normal. Uh, everything, and, and they don't realize that what was normal was normal so amazing 
But also to remember this, your normal in 2019, you had built your capacity, your ability up to function at that level, whatever that looks like for you. Now, it was a massive slowdown for two years in every way, shape and form. And now you think 2022, you're going to function again just like you did in 2019, just like that. And some people are like, what's wrong with me? Da, da, da. No, 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 folks. Re-evaluate what your normal is. It may not be what it was in 2019, but you need to take time out and say, God, what is my normal? What is 2023 going to look like? Are you just going to come rushing into 2023 with your expectations from 2019 and say, okay, this year is going to look like that again? Maybe God's got another plan for your life. Elizabeth remained in seclusion for five months, verse 25. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. He has shown me favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. What is she talking about there? Folks, remember, she had been barren. We know she's an elderly lady now and she's pregnant. We don't know if she's in her 50s, 60s, 70s. We don't know. We don't have a clue from Scripture. But she had not been able to have a child for many years. Was that 20, 30, 40 years? We don't know. And what I want to unpack for you this morning is that Christmas for her was breaking barrenness in her life. Barrenness is a metaphor for so many things that you and I go through in our lives. It is a time where your expectations are not fulfilled for an extended period of time. You know, that is, that is some of the hardest things you and I go through when there's something you've been trusting God for and it just doesn't happen, not for a week or a month, but for 10 years or 20 years. Folks, do you know how testing time is? It is relentless. This woman and her husband, they still served God faithfully even though they were barren. And so the, the, this concept of barrenness, I, 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 I remember now... God has blessed us with four amazing children. So barrenness in terms of not being able to have physical offspring is not something that Jen and I can say we know. But I want to tell you that barrenness in terms of delayed expectations, things that have not come to pass, I want to tell you I can tick a couple of boxes in that area. Expectations that I've had about how I thought things would turn out and work out, etc. And it has not turned out that way. And I remember one time the Lord just challenging me and saying, Would you acknowledge that that area, that thing you've been trusting God for, that is, is an area of barrenness in your life? And I want us to look and learn. And, and so when I talk about barrenness, I don't want you to... Just kind of sign out and say, well, I've got five kids, you know, this is for somebody else. Barrenness is something, I want to say, I don't think you can serve God for an extended period of time and not, in some area, experience some barrenness. And folks, this Christmas story, this miraculous birth, is the promise that God can break barrenness in our lives. It's one of the things I want us to pray. Do you, can you think of an area of life where there's a delayed hope, a delayed expectation that you just, you're nearly giving up on and you're like, God, I don't know if I should keep trusting you for this, for this thing. I've, I mean, I, so many people have expectations about studies. I want to study that. One day I'm going to study that. People have expectation, career expectations. People have relationship expect, expectations. I, I, I was thinking of a particular lady with her, with her mom. She had an expectation of a mom being a certain way, a, a matriarch, a, 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 and a whole life a mom never lived up to those expectations. Folks, that is an area of barrenness, expectations that haven't been fulfilled. Now, do you give up on the fact that your, 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 your earthly biological mother never fulfilled your, 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 your need for maternal love and nurture and care? Do you give up on the fact that God didn't fulfill your needs for mothering through your biological mother? Or do you have an expectation that God can still bring a woman from whoever, from wherever, into your life to minister to that deep mother need that you have in your life? Sometimes, you see, we kind of give up and say, well, I'll never have... 
a mother in my life the way I needed, the way I yearned. But God can break barrenness, folks. And so this, this is just, the more I was meditating on this, I said, this is huge. What the Christmas, the hope that the Christmas story brings is huge. If we just will give time and say, Lord. And I, I, was, I was quite surprised by the Lord where, where he challenged me that there was an area in my life where there was barrenness. And I was, I'd given up trusting God to bring new life, to bring a miraculous birth, to bring a baby, to bring life into that situation. Because I, it, whatever, things that happen is like, ah, that's not going to happen. But folks, Christmas tells us God breaks barrenness. I want to look at a couple of uh, just info about the whole topic of barrenness. Now, the word we use today is infertility. But I've given you, I've described to you that this concept of barrenness or infertility is huge. And it, it applies in various areas of our life. So, so just, just journey with me and trust God to reveal things in your own life that you need to trust Him for a miracle birth, for new life in whatever area. So just um, historically, in agrarian societies, that's agricultural societies, which during the Bible period, bearing children was highly valued, and women's primary role was that of being a mother. Folks, if that, if you grow up with the expectation that this is your, your, your calling, your vocation, your place in society. That's why when Elizabeth said, God has removed my shame, in a whole community, she carried shame for many, many years because of this reality of the community she lived in. What are you carrying? An expectation, a pressure from your society, maybe from your family. How many, how many of you kind of get that? You know, like, you know, when are you going to get a boyfriend? Okay, don't put up your hands right now. Please don't put up your hands right now. And every time you go home, it's like, oh no, my mom's going to ask me, have you got a boyfriend? You know, those kind of questions. And, he, and, and what does that do to you? Often these biblical women suffer deep shame as a consequence of their barrenness. And remember uh, from the Women's Day uh, time you guys had here. Remember the, the, the significant thing that was shared there about shame. They, shared the, they, they said this, the lady, what was the lady's name? I forget. Trish. Remember Trish shared about shame. She said, she said guilt is something because you carry where you experience because of something you've done. But shame is when guilt seeps deep into your soul and it, and it, and it affects your identity. Shame is when you become that negative thing that you've experienced or been done to you or that you did. It's literally when it alters your, your identity, your, your, your value, your sense of worth deep inside of you. And Trish, as a trained psychologist, said it is, dealing with guilt is much easier than it is dealing with shame. Because shame, shame defines who you are. You carry that negative thing from your past. For Elizabeth, it was the, sh the carrying the thing of, I am barren. What's your identity? I'm Elizabeth, the barren woman. How many of us are carrying shame? And folks, that's why sometimes you need to go to God with us. You carrying shame, you don't even realize that that's part of your identity. You experienced a failure, whatever that failure looks like. And now your whole identity, your value, your worth is shaped by that failure from, you know, 1989. Folks, this is deep. Christmas is there to break shame off you. Christmas is there to, to go deep into your soul and rewire your identity because Jesus, this promise of life, this promise of new birth, came to break these things off our lives. This is, this is so significant. I was like, you know, I mean, I thought I was done with Elizabeth last week. And as I was preparing this week, I was like, this is deep stuff. I want to move on. Just in physical, physical stats about barrenness or infertility, 15% of reproductive aged couples worldwide are affected by infertility. 9% of men and 10% of women reported infertility problems in the USA. WHO, the World Health Organization, said this, and I put it there, and it's such interesting words. 186 million ever married women of reproductive age in developing countries were maintaining a child wish. Such interesting words. There's some words that you say, what do they mean? I know my wife said, what an ever married woman. 
I said, I think those are ladies who've been married for quite a long time, okay, ever married, you know? But 186 million women in the developing world are carrying a child wish, a longing and a desire for children. Folks, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. And this is the promise of Christmas. God wants to break barrenness and provide for us. Barrenness in the Bible. There are seven barren women in the Bible. I didn't realize there were so many until I did research. Goodness. It, it is, folks, if this is something, if barrenness, and I'm not saying infertility, physical, if there's an area of your life, there are seven Bible stories you can go and study to get promises and build your faith that God wants to break this in your life because these are seven women who miraculously had children. They were declared as barren, but God came through for them. Look at them. Three of the four matriarchs in Genesis, Sarah, Rebecca, and Rachel. Wow. Hannah, the mother of Samuel in 1 Samuel. Then there was the mother of Samson. The Bible doesn't mention her name in Judges 13. Then there's the Shunammite woman who Elisha ministered to in 2 Kings 4. And then, of course, there's Elizabeth who we've been looking at, John the Baptist's mother. Seven women, and God came through for every one of them. Folks, this should inspire you to say, God, you break barrenness. Galatians 4.27 For it is written, Be glad, barren woman, you who never bore a child, shout for joy and cry aloud, you who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband. So this is actually uh, Paul in Galatians quoting Isaiah. It's like double. This is, this is the Bible on, on stereo. Is the, the Lord's turning up the volume here. And in Galatians, he's comparing the life of faith to the life of obeying the law. And he's comparing uh, the, the, the wives of, well, the two women that Abraham produced children from. Hagar, who was the woman of the flesh, and uh, Ishmael came from Hagar. And then there's Sarah, and Isaac came from them. That's what he's comparing. And he's saying that if we have faith, even though you have never birthed a child, given labor, more of the, you can have more children than those who physically produce children. And you know, this is one of those scriptures that I've, I've just, it's been like in the back of my mind. I've often thought of it in terms of so many single people that I've known over many years that have lived such amazingly fruitful lives, have impacted so many people, and you could probably think of them, just because they're not married or just because they haven't had physical offspring has not stopped them being amazingly effective for the kingdom and have so many spiritual children and offspring that, that, that they can literally call their own. And, and folks, this is an amazing promise of God can break barrenness. And folks, I just want to say sometimes... God answers our miracles in ways that we don't expect. I don't know if He will break your barrenness by producing and, and causing your womb to, to nurture a child and you bring forth a physical child from your womb. Folks, maybe God will bring a young person into your life that you can nurture and it is a way God is breaking your barrenness. Don't let barrenness rob you from all the other blessing that God can bring into your life. I want to look now, just a, a, in summary, barrenness represents more than just unfruitfulness. It represents an unfulfilled longing a, a, or godly desire and the deep pain associated with that loss. Both Mary and Elizabeth had miracle births. Elizabeth's story is of a deep longing fulfilled. Mary's story is about the suddenlies of life and of God. The suddenlies. Ho, ho. Can you feel there's a shift in the atmosphere, the suddenlies? What are the suddenlies? So I wanted to contrast. And what I'm contrasting here is Elizabeth's story also, miraculous conception at the same time. Also, angels meeting with her, same as Mary, their family. But in, in Mary's story, she had a suddenly. It wasn't a longing fulfilled. It was 
She wasn't looking for it. She was engaged to be married to Joseph. Now, you know, when these things happen, you're engaged to somebody, you're imagining your life with this dude, you're imagining having children with this dude. Now, before you even get married, you're pregnant. And folks, if you read the Bible, Joseph was actually considering breaking the engagement. Can you imagine what's going on in Mary's life where this person you engaged to is now thinking of breaking off your engagement? Unless you've been through that kind of a smash up. Well, I think most, many, many adults have been through some sort of relational breakup and you know how devastating it is. Folks, this suddenly of Mary was huge. It was tumultuous. It radically altered her life. And I want to tell you, Christmas is also a reminder that God is the God of the suddenness. We have the Elizabeth story after many years of longing fulfilled, but it's also the suddenness. You are very happy in your job, and you are just cruising along, and suddenly you get a call out of the blue from some employment uh, agent saying, listen, please can you send me your CV? Uh, you've been recommended. And, and you, I mean, think of Cynthia. Within two weeks, she got offered a post in the United States. Within two weeks, she was out of here. The sudden knees of God. Are you okay with the sudden knees of God? This is also the Christmas story. How about, I mean, we've had it uh, when I was working in engineering, where I was happy and suddenly uh, uh, the city engineer came and said there was a scholarship being offered to go study in Europe. And it was fully paid, one year, studying the Netherlands, uh, 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 engineering course, etc. There was a suddenly. How do you process suddenness? Folks, I want to submit to you, it's the same as you process anything. God, is this your will for my life? And that was our prayer. Is this your will? We needed confirmation. Because it was all paid, it was just like filling the application form and you're flying to Europe. Folks, if that had happened in our lives, Jenna, our conviction is we wouldn't be here today. We would have been somewhere else in the world, but not in Peter Maritzburg. And we believe that this is God's will for our lives. And when, we, when, that, opportunity, when that suddenly came, bam, do you want to go study in Europe for a year? And, and we were like, we'd love to travel. I mean, it's travel in Europe, you know, you just buy uh, apparently, you know, a one-way, uh, a year ticket to the railway line. You can go anywhere. We were like, this is amazing. Everybody we talked to, they said, you know what? This is such a big opportunity. This must be from God. This is like a God-sized opportunity. This can't be from the devil. We were like, I want to know this is God. I'm not packing up and, and, and everything and going off for a year. And everybody was saying, this must be from God. And then I phoned my friend, our friend, Pastor Gareth, some of you know him, and he asked a question. He said, Jacques, before this opportunity, this suddenly came down your road, what was God saying, saying to you? Was the alignment, if you just go back a bit, you know, and Jen and I went back at the kind of things we were trusting God, and we were like, you know, this is not in line with what God was speaking to us about. We were staying in Port Elizabeth at that time, and the Lord was speaking to us about building and staying and putting our roots down there. And, and I had to go back to the city engineer and say, sorry, I, I can't fill in that application form. Um, I, don't, I didn't say to him, it's not God. And I turned it down. And you know, it was a few months later that we got a call from our, for basically from our pastor in Cape Town. And we were part of the His People Church in P, and we were asked to help take over the church. There was a leadership transition. And if we'd, been in, if we'd been in the Netherlands during that year, we would have never, that opportunity to, 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 to lead the church in Port Elizabeth would have never come up. We would have missed a God opportunity for an amazing sort of holiday opportunity. And, you know, I just want to submit to you, you know, I don't believe all the suddenness. You know, that's why I put in there the suddenness of life and of God. Because there are suddenness of life. You know, you suddenly get a medical uh, diagnosis that just rocks your world. I'm not sure it's always of God. You, whatever, you're going to work and you're suddenly in a massive accident. I don't, I don't blame everything on God. But it's a suddenly, and suddenly you're sitting in hospital for two weeks in traction. Ask me, I experienced that. It's like years of suddenly, what do you do now? Folks, I want us to look at Mary. We're going to look at some suddenness. I'm going to unpack this a little bit more. And I, and I want to look at the whole aspect of, well, let's just look at the scripture. This is the story of Jesus being born. He, Joseph, had a dream. God's angel spoke 
in the dream, Joseph, son of David, don't hesitate to get married. Now, this was his suddenly. He was hesitating whether he should marry this girl. Remember, I mentioned Mary, Mary. Mary. Mary's pregnancy is spirit-conceived. God's Holy Spirit has made her pregnant. She will bring a son to birth, and when she does, you, Joseph, will name him Jesus. God saves, because he will save his people, his people from their sins. Folks, God's will for their lives. I want to say, how do you process a suddenly? I'm so surprised at how many people is like, oh, pastor, no, I got a new job there. Oh, no, I did. And, and like, did you pray about it? What did God say? I got a job. It's like, uh, how, do you believe this is God's will for you? Well, it must be. It was a big bonus. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you could have just been bonus out of God's will for your life. I want to go on. This verse goes on. This is Matthew speaking. And Matthew says, This would bring the prophet's embryonic revelation to full term. And he's quoting from Isaiah. Watch for this. A virgin will get pregnant and bear a son. They will name him Emmanuel. And this is Matthew's commentary where he gives the definition of Emmanuel. The Hebrew for God is with us. God is with us. This is Jesus. The story of Jesus, the story of Christmas is God is with you in the hope deferred or in the suddenness. God is with us. God is with us. And I wanted to put that scripture because the Lord showed Mary and Joseph so clearly that this suddenly was of God. And I believe that is so key to help us process the suddenness of life is is this God's will? I want to kind of, two miracle births, summarize these this way. Two miracle births had two very different impacts. Elizabeth had a lifelong dream fulfilled. Mary had a life dreams radically altered. But God was in it all, working his master plan. Neither Elizabeth nor Mary would today have it any other Folks, I want to pray for us that as we trust in God for miracles, sometimes miracles are the suddenness in our lives. A job offer or a relationship. Are we, as we trust in God for miracles, open to the suddenness? This is part of the Christmas story. And the suddenness I'm asking for is, God, I want your suddenness. When you break into my life and it's in line with your plan for this planet to bring heaven down to earth, are you open to the suddenness as in Mary's life? God loves suddenness. Or must your life be boxed and organized and you're like, God, you may be limiting God bringing miracles in your life. If you want miracles, we have to be open to suddenness. But at the same time, Elizabeth's story is a story of breaking barrenness, breaking infertility. I don't know where you are. I want to pray for you. Can we stand as we close in prayer? Lord, thank you for the Christmas story. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for giving. Thank you for coming, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for sending. Oh, God, we are grateful. And Lord, as we look at these stories, two women, such different stations of life. One old, one young. One yearning for, for a baby. One not ready, not planned, not, not yet. But God, you were in it all. You were in it all. You are the God of miracles, Lord. And Lord, as next year, as we prepare for next year, and we say, God, we want you to break through into our lives, in our families' lives, in our workplace, with our colleagues, with our classmates. God, want you to break through with miracles. God, whether it be a suddenly or whether it be a longing fulfilled, God, break through in our lives. I want to firstly bring, bring people, us, who've been, who have an area in our lives where we've saying, God, this has been barren. It's been too long. 
God, we bring this barrenness. God, this story inspires us. And by faith, I pray, God, break the barrenness in our lives, Lord. Break the barrenness. Birth the miraculous life in those areas that we've given up on. And Lord, we also say, God, we open to your suddenness. Lord, we don't want the enemy's suddenness. We don't want accidents and, and, and horrible medical prognosis. We're not asking for those suddenness. God, we are asking for your suddenness. Opportunities from heaven. Lord, that you kept hidden, but you're going to open, you're going to reveal to us in this next year. May we not limit you by not not being open to the suddenness that miracles bring into our lives, Lord. God, we trust you for miracles for this next year, Lord. May we, may we be, Lord, as these, be a womb for the spiritual seed of your word to find place that we may trust you for miracles. Lord, may we be wombs for miracles, Father, for people around us, Lord, people who come to us who are barren. And we would say, I'll pray for you. I'm going to trust God that you fall pregnant. Lord, and in every way, shape, and form, may we be for the people, there for the people who go through the suddenness that rock their world, that don't know what's going on. May we be a rock to them. May we bring your word to them. May we bring comfort to them. May we bring hope to those people whose worlds are being rocked by the suddenness of life, Lord. God, there's so many opportunities for you to use us to reveal you miracles that make him known. God, we ask for them. And Christmas reminds us, Lord, that you break into the mundane, Lord, and you, and you bring your plans to pass, Lord. On earth as it is in heaven, we pray. Yes. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 We hope you've enjoyed this message. For more information, please visit our website at www at hispeoplepmb.co.za and for more of our messages visit our youtube and soundcloud channels as well as other podcast platforms if you would like to contact us please email us at hispeoplepmb at gmail.com or send a message to 061-452-0877 we hope to see you soon god bless you